We are going to read chapter eight. Dig, dogs, dig. Pinky and Stinky tied their rope around the big rock. The wind howled. The two pirates pulled and pulled and pulled. They need help, said Jack. Arr, let the dogs do the work, growled Captain Bones. You're not very nice to them, said Annie. Who cares, roared Captain Bones. Captain, we got it, shouted Pinky. Look, they were able to move the big rock. They started pulling the rock across the sand. Now let's dig where the rock was, said Jack. All of us. But Captain Bones ignored his suggestion. Dig, you dogs, he shouted. Pinky and Stinky started to dig. The wind blew even harder. There was going to be a thunderstorm. Ow! I got sand in my eyes, Pinky whined. Ow! My back hurts, Stinky cried. Dig, shouted Captain Bones. He held Jack and Annie with one hand. With the other, he pulled out the gold medallion. He tossed it at the two pirates. It fell into the hole. Dig for more of these, you swine, he said. Squawk! <gasps> Look, Annie said. Polly was back. She was circling above them. Go back, she squawked. Stinky and Pinky looked up at the parrot. They scowled. Dig, shouted Captain Bones. A big storm is coming, Captain Bones, said Pinky. Go back, said Polly. The bird's an omen, Captain shouted. Uh, dig, dig, you dogs, cried Captain Bones. Go back, squawked Polly. The bird's warning us, shouted Pinky. We've got to get to the ship before it's too late. The two pirates threw down their shovels. They started running towards the rowboat. You come back, shouted Captain Bones. He dragged Jack and Annie down the beach as he ran after his men. Stop! But the pirates kept running. They got to the rowboat and pushed it into the sea. Wait, cried Captain Bones. Pinky and Stinky jumped into the boat and they started rowing. Wait! Captain Bones let go of Jack and Annie. He ran into the water. Wait, you dogs! He howled himself and he hauled himself into the rowboat. Then the three pirates disappeared into the spray of the waves. Go back, squawked Polly. She means us, said Annie. Just then, the storm broke over the island. The wind howled. Rain fell into buckets. Let's go, cried Annie. Wait, I have to get the medallion, shouted Jack. He ran to the hole dug by the pirates. He looked down in it. Even the dreary light, the medallion was shining. Big fat raindrops were falling into the hole, washing away the sand. Jack saw a patch of wood. Then the rain cleared away more sand. And Jack saw the top of an old trunk. He stared. Was it Captain Kidd's treasure chest? Hurry, Jack, cried Annie. She was halfway up the treehouse ladder. I found it. I found it, cried Jack. I found the treasure chest. Forget the treasure chest, said Annie. We have to go now. The storm's getting worse. Jack kept staring at the chest. Was there gold inside? Silver? Precious gems? Come on, now! Annie was shouting from the treehouse window. But Jack couldn't, couldn't tear himself away. He brushed the rest of the muddy sand off the chest. Jack, forget the treasure chest, cried Annie. Let's go! Go back, squawked Polly. Just look at that parrot. Just looked at the Jack. Looked at the parrot. She was perched on the black rock. You see the treasure chest. He stared into her wise eyes. He thought he knew her. Knew her from somewhere else. Go back, Jack. She said. She sounded like a person. Okay, it was definitely time to go. Jack took one last look at the treasure chest. He clutched the gold medallion. Then he took off, running toward the treehouse. His socks and rain boots were still there. He quickly pulled the boots on. He shoved the socks into his backpack. The rope ladder was dancing wildly in the wind. Jack grabbed it. 
The ladder swayed as Jack climbed. He was tossed this way and that way, but he held on tight. At last, he pulled himself into the treehouse. Let's go, he cried. Annie was already holding the Pennsylvania book. She pointed to the picture of Frog Creek. I wish we could go there, she shouted. The wind was already blowing hard, but now it blew even harder. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. We are going to continue to chapter nine, okay? The mysterious M. Drip, drip. Jack opened his eyes. Rain was dripping from the leaves of the tree. They were back in Frog, Frog Creek. The rain was softer. The wind was gentler. The air was sweeter. Oh man, Jack sighed. That was close. He was still holding the gold medallion. Polly's gone, said Annie sadly. I was hoping she might come back with us. No magic creature has ever come back with us, said Jack. He pulled off his backpack. It was damp with rain and salt water. Jack took out the pirate book. He put it on the stack of books on top of the dinosaur book and the night book and the mummy book. Then Jack put the gold medallion beside the bookmark with the letter M. Next, he went down onto his knees and ran his fingers over the shimmering M on the floor. We didn't find any M's on this trip, he said. Or the M person, said Annie. Squawk! Polly? Annie cried. The parrot swooshed into the treehouse. She perched on the stack of books. Polly looked straight at Jack. What, what are you doing here? He asked her. Slowly, Polly raised her bright green wings. They grew bigger and bigger until they spread out like a huge green cape. Then, in a great swirl of colors, in a blur of feathers and light, in a flapping and stretching and screeching, a new being took shape. Polly was not a parrot any longer. In her place was an old woman, a beautiful old woman with long white hair and piercing eyes. Oh my goodness, Polly turned into a woman. She wore a green feathered cape. She perched on the stack of books and she was very calm and very still. Neither Jack nor Annie could speak. They were too amazed. Hello, Jack. Hello, Annie, the old woman said. My name is Morgan Lee Fay. <gasps> oh my goodness, today you are going to write about who do you think Morgan Lee Fay is? And what was she doing there? We are also going to draw a picture of her and we are going to um, make her her feather coat, okay? So many things. 